Shaq had to play against Ewan, Tumbo, Sabonis. Hey guys, this is Dominique Wilkins. And hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey guys, what's good? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. My name is Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. Now you all know those clips on YouTube. Former NBA players and NBA legends talking about how many points they would score in today's NBA. And obviously we will never know. But the one thing I gotta say is I mostly agree with their assessments with, with their claims and in today's episode i not only want to take a look at what they feel how, how many points they would score but also give you my personal take how many points i feel they would score in today's nba but enough of that blah blah i would say let's get right into today's episode come on guys So the first player that I want to take a look at is Allen Iverson. Now, Allen Iverson in his prime would average more than 30 points in the 2000s. And we all know that this guy was a scoring machine. The thing why I feel that he would be crazy in today's NBA is just the fact that you can't touch him today. And he was so quick. And even though he was a short player, physically, that guy was a monster. I don't see anybody who could guard him in today's NBA. Even back in the days when you had all those bigs who would basically slap your face, push you around, basically punish you when you go to the rim. You don't have those guys anymore. So what would be a reason for Allen Iverson not to penetrate even more? Back in the days, he had to take three-point shots, and we know he was never the greatest shooter, but it was always like a re last resort. Like, he took the obvious open shot, but he was not looking for a three-pointer. He would rather give you a clear crossover, penetrate, and try to score at the rim. So, my prediction is, I would say that he would average above 40 points in today's NBA. Let's see what he has to say. That's, ain't that too my home? Of course, but your, yours are horrible. Oh, it's okay. Okay, if 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 I if 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 I averaged thirty, I lost the scoring title to Kobe the year he averaged thirty-five. I averaged thirty-three, and I'm just thinking like, if if I was to play in this area where it's wide open, if I can average thirty-three in a season, I'm gonna just take it up to forty-three. I know ten points more. I agree with that. Now, the next player that I have on my list is super interesting. I want to talk about Bill Russell. Now, Bill Russell, to me, was never a really true gifted offensive player. He, to me, was more basketball IQ, defense, being a leader. But offensively, he could not dribble well. He was not a great shooter. But that, again, showed how important you can be to your team, even though you're lacking a major skill. And I tell to all the young players, even when I was a coach, I, I told them, hey, you don't have to be perfect in any aspect. Just make sure you know certain things, how you can help your team and be great at that. Now, I would say in today's NBA, I would give him probably about 10 points per game. But what I do think where he would dominate is on the defensive end. I think he would average around like 15 rebounds and even five blocks. Because of the smart basketball IQ he had, he would probably see, hey, I got so many young guys who can run fast, who can shoot and everything. I don't need to do all that stuff. I'll be a team player. I do what I can do to help my team. So I solely focus on defense and there he would destroy because he would never rely too much on physical um, positioning and stuff he was more about being in the right position being a smart shot blocker blocking the shot to your to, uh, to your teammates to have a fast break and stuff so he would be effective in a different way and talking about a great player in today's nba how would Larry Bird do? Now this to me is also a very interesting one. Now we know that there are many fans in today's NBA who see Larry Bird, see the highlight tapes and think, oh, he was slow, he could not run, he could not jump. Not realizing that Larry Bird was, yes, he was slow back then and yes, he could not jump back then, but still he was super effective. And we see the prime example in today's NBA with Luka Doncic and Jokic. They are super slow, but that shows again, if you have basketball IQ and you know how to play the game right, you can still dominate. 
My prediction for Larry Bird would be, I think he would average above 30 points, even more rebounds, because to me, I think when I watch the NBA nowadays, there are not those, those crazy rebounders as we have back in the days. Also because you don't have those, yeah, seven footers uh, running around like crazy. So to me, I would say he would be like 35 points, 12 rebounds and eight assists. And would he be the best player in the NBA? Yes, no question. But hey, no hating on the young guys, Luka Doncic and Jokic, they are sensational. And they would be, yeah, they would be in the MVP conversation with Larry Bird, no question. But I still would give the edge to Larry because Larry has something that the other two guys don't have. A, Larry Bird can destroy you mentally. And B, Larry Bird would hustle throughout the entire game which also is leading by example getting your teammates to do the same and that was something that the Boston Celtics really did great in the back uh, back in the 1980s can't overlook that so let's take a look at the next player now obviously we also got to talk about Michael Jordan but I think that this could actually be a very short one everybody who feels that Jordan would average about the same or less sorry but you have not understood the game if somebody is able to score like 35 36 37 points in an era where basically everybody is punching you and this is also another thing back in the days the 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 paint was way more packed which means that because jordan was not aiming for a lot of three pointers he always had to penetrate when the paint was busy with like basically eight players and he still found a way how to score at the rim now in my opinion I would give him like 40, 41, 42, and without a question. And this has nothing to do with that I'm a Michael Jordan fan. I, to me, Kobe Bryant would be in the same kind of category. Um, who would stop them? Who would stop them if back in the days nobody was able to stop him when you could push him around, when you could hand check and everything? So give me a logical explanation why he would not kill and destroy today's NBA. I'm listening. The next player that also would be super interesting to me would be Shaquille O'Neal. Now, he recently said that he would kill everybody in today's NBA, and I'm 100% sure that this is true. Actually, I would love to see that. From all the players in the list, the one player that I would really, really wish to see how he would do in today's NBA would be Shaquille O'Neal because I want to see all those young kids in the NBA and the fans that say, oh, he could not hang in today's NBA. I would love to see... <laughs> Let's see their faces when Shaquille O'Neal is getting guarded by, I don't know, by, by the bigs of today's NBA, how he would kill them. You know, we have to remember back in the days, and this has nothing to do with basketball skill, but back in the days when you had those rosters with, uh, with, where every team had like two or three, seven foot one, seven foot two guys on the roster. And yes, not every team had skilled big men. But we're still talking about super strong human beings. And they had no chance of keeping Shaquille O'Neal away from the basket. So you're telling me that, that those lighter guys in today's NBA who are not wired the same way with the mentality. We know mentality can, can compensate a lot of physical weakness. But you, you're trying to tell me that those guys in today's NBA who don't have the body, who don't have the mentality, that they can stop Shaquille O'Neal? He always says barbecue chicken. Seriously, to me, I would feel sorry for those guys. Simply sorry for those guys. If you were playing, you know, how would you feel about it? Oh, if I was playing, I'd average 60 in this league today. Easily. Yeah. These little cupcakes. Did you win at 500? Yeah, I'd, I'd average 60. Trust me. And they would have to pay me $300 million a year tax-free if I was playing. I heard that. Now talking from one big man to the other, the same thing that I said about Shaquille O'Neal basically would go for Will Chamberlain. And the only difference is that Shaq, obviously because of the way his body is built, everybody sees that he would kill today's players. But Will Chamberlain, to me, from what I've read, from what I have uh, have heard from guys who actually knew him, uh, even Arnold Schwarzenegger, for example, said that Will Chamberlain is probably one of the strongest guys that he has ever seen. I don't know if you know that story, but Arnold Schwarzenegger said that Will Chamberlain li uh, lifted him up like a child, like this. And you know how big and strong and muscular Arnold Schwarzenegger was. And Will Chamberlain lifted him up like a little kid. So just to know how strong he was, and he was skilled. That's the other thing. He was skilled. That's many people say, oh, it's the 50s and 60s. Man, this guy was skilled. Take a look. Do your homework. This guy could play basketball. I think in today's NBA, 
he would average like 45 points. I'm dead serious. I think he would probably average more than Michael Jordan. Does not mean that he was uh, would be better than Michael Jordan in today's NBA, but I see nobody who could guard him at all. I think to me, I have I have this image in my mind. It would be like like little kids trying to guard an adult. That's how I feel. 